From my smartphone to yours, I'm casting love. Here from the windy city of Costa Mesa, California, this is your Thursday Namaste Today. What's the difference between lust and love? We get them confused. You know, we talk about love and we date, but what does it really take to find love? I can tell you. Introducing Secrets of Birthdays, the Love and Lust Report. You send us your date of birth, we send you a custom video that's all about you. The biggest problem usually is people choose the wrong person. Not anymore. Find out your birthday secrets today. Available online at secretsofbirthdays.com. Good morning and namaste and welcome to Namaste Today. I'm your host and spiritual life coach, Christopher Watecki. My modality is psychic astrology and my personal mission is to stand in my heart and help other people unite the light in theirs. This webisode is for Thursday, March 31st, 2016. And today the Great Human Walk has reached Step 11 Aries, which is I become who I am. Hello friends, so nice to see you. Thank you for logging in and thank you for all of your sharing and comments on our Soul, Soul Garden website. That's at soulgarden.tv. That's where we allow comments and we have a lot of uh, viewers that share their opinions, share their stories and also share their insights. So thank you so much. It's a dream of mine come true to create that little community. Also, I want to do a shout out to vote on the next Love Fest city. In May, my birthday month, I'm going to fly to a city in the United States that you, the viewers, vote on. For details on that, come on down to soulgarden.tv under About Hit Love Fest. You'll see details about that. Now, that said, let's start with today's vibe. Today's vibe is sunny and super focused. Super focused. That's due to the very earthly energies that are kind of present. For one, we've reached step 11 of Aries. Step 11 is I become or when we enter into integrity. So usually it's not until the 11th day or really 12th day if you count step zero until the 12th day of any transit that we actually start to feel normal or not in some sort of peril or some sort of shock. That's because the early degrees are always the shocking and difficult degrees. So today I think you're going to feel sunny and you're going to feel super focused on that integrity. Now my heart today is trying to be healthier. It's trying to be in my own integrity, which means I'm honoring who I am on the inside and I'm presenting or protecting that on the outside. I feel that I'm finally on the right path, or at least I've left the wrong path. And today, I'm feeling good. That's because step 11 adds to a 2, so when you get to that integrity, you will feel good. You'll feel the integrity. Now, as far as feelings are concerned, my emotions are rather conservative. The moon is still in Capricorn. The moon will also cross Pluto at the end of the day. So I'm feeling a little darkness. I'm feeling a little sadness. I'm feeling a little end of an era. But that is all good death, not negative death. And today I'm letting go of old feelings. Feelings I don't want to feel anymore. I'm going to let them go for good. I'm open to the big spiritual picture today. Venus is at step 23 Pisces, and I'm open to the high-mindedness of my spirit. It's time to be open to what my spiritual calling is. It's time to open up to my own self-compassion. It's time to open up to the universe's mercy. I'm thinking about what I'm manifesting today. That's because Mercury is at step 19 Aries. I'm thinking about the actions I'm going to manifest. I'm thinking about which actions to take next. I'm also confirming and affirming the actions that I intend to stop and no longer do. I am pursuing my spiritual path. That's because Mars is at step 7 Sagittarius. I am pursuing my soul's calling. I am pursuing my higher good and my greater purpose. And today, because the moon crosses Pluto, I am killing old decisions that no longer serve me. 
old directions that lead me into temptation and not into love. I am killing off any commitment that is not aligned with my spiritual truth. And that's because Pluto's at step 17 Capricorn, which means we're drawing lines around spiritual decisions and making sure that those decisions do not get messed with. So today's joy question, you choose to accept it, is to love myself and love myself some more. Become self-love abundant. Now, what I mean by that, by love myself and love myself some more, it, some more, is actually the step 11. The first is I love myself. The second is I love myself some more. And when we're in a step 11 day, that's literally a day of showing up for yourself, showing up for your healing, showing up and filling in the holes, pockmarks, or energetic deficiencies that you have so that you can fill this zero into a one. Remember, it was a 10 yesterday. So you can fill this into a one. And then on top of that, we can feel step two, terrific. All right. Now for young souls, particularly Virgos, Virgos who are, I love myself, I love myself some more. That's why Virgos are such prince and princesses. They've got two Leos inside of them. But a lot of young Virgos will love themselves. And then that energy that God gives to love more, you'll go give that to someone else. You'll go invest that in someone else. So today it's very important that you love yourself and you love yourself some more. You might ask, well, what step can I love other people as much as I love myself? Step 22, literally double the days we've spent so far in Aries. So now let's move on to the next webisode or segment of the 11 Steps to Serious Joy. We've been climbing the steps each day and I'm making a little segment, if you will, that allows you to understand how to build the steps. And today is one of my favorite steps and the one step it took me the longest to learn. Step six, I receive. Hello, friends, and welcome to the next edition or webisode of the 11 Steps to Serious Joy. This represents my life's work and basically my own study of human consciousness and how it unfolds. And today we've reached step six, uh, which is also known as Libra and also known as Venus. I call it I receive. It's the consciousness that's dedicated to simply receiving energies. And this is an interesting one, I have to say, because I didn't really understand step six or Libras for that matter until I started to put it in the framework of the 11 steps to serious joy. It was also from working with lots of clients that I realized a lot of people um, could manifest, but once it got there, they couldn't receive it. Or because they couldn't receive, they weren't even manifesting something to receive. And I realized that receiving, the ability to accept something, or let's say take it to the heart, is a whole conscious talent in itself. In fact, what I learned was, it's actually the ability to take things to your heart that allows you to balance things. You might think that balancing things comes down to giving more, but actually it comes down to tolerating more or receiving more. That's usually how balance is restored. So that said, going up the 11 steps to serious joy, you know, I joked yesterday that the mind has no business in manifestation till step five. There's nothing to think about, period. And what's even more interesting to me in my study is that we're not ready to open up and to, re and to receive something until step six. We're not ready to open and receive until step six. Now, just to define what I mean by receiving, Receiving is taking something all the way to the heart, that you allow your heart to taste it, that you allow yourself to get your heart's opinion. If you're like, oh, put it on the desk, you didn't receive it. If I say to you, hey, you got a real issue with this, and you're like, whatever, you didn't receive it. So if someone doesn't take it to the heart, first of all, they're not receiving, all right? And this is why a lot of people are unsatisfied later in life. They manifest, but they don't feel anything. It's because they can't receive. They can't take it to the heart. So a lot of the reasons why people can't open up to receive is because they haven't completed the first five steps before that. They haven't protected themselves. That's the biggest one. They haven't loved themselves. They haven't felt themselves. They don't know how they feel about it. They don't know what they believe. They don't know where they belong. And they don't know what they think about it. Or they know what they think about it, but that's it. Okay, so a lot of people can't receive because these things aren't in place. The other most important one is I protect. 
I would say 80% of the time people can't receive because they have no protection. By protection, I mean a backup plan. You know where the exit is. You have, uh, you know, you know what you're going to do if it fails, and you know what you're going to do uh, if it doesn't fail. That's protection. Laying down time and space to plan the whole thing and for it in the first place. So receiving absolutely requires the first five steps in place. It's protected. You love what you're about to receive. You can feel what you're about to receive. You believe in what you're about to receive. You belong receiving what you're about to receive. And you think it's a good idea. <laughs> okay? That's what we can open up to receive. So that's probably the most profound uh, uh, thing I learned by putting step six in was that it's not that girls need a lot of foreplay. It's not that guys have to be talked into it. It's that there are five steps before they're going to open up. This is why you don't have intercourse on the first date, not because it's a sin or God cares, but because you are receiving their energy to the heart when you have none of these things in place, okay? It throws you off balance, and that's what six comes down to. Step six is Libra, Venus, the ability to balance, which means the ability to receive creative ideas. That's also counts and I receive, okay? The ability to uh, receive... Um, you know, inspiration for what color I should use is step six. And that's step seven is the inspiration. But opening up to inspiration is step seven. If you don't open in six, you're not going to hear God in seven, right? So uh, many people want to manifest in life, but I find they are flawed or hurting or ignorant or whatever word you want to use in the I receive step. And this uh, can happen in many places. Sometimes they're uh, ignorant in the sense of they haven't protected themselves or done any of the steps. So they're skipping steps. Sometimes people simply don't understand the consciousness of receiving. And that's the thing. It's a consciousness. It's a consciousness that you and I can probably sit here and talk about, but it's not talked about very much. But basically, you know what it feels like when someone does something for you that's so great and your heart is totally grateful for it. You go into this space where you're like, thank you, and your energy receives it. And you feel this receive. You feel this, this pull to the heart. And it's an energetic pull to the heart. And you can't, you can't deny it, the I receive. You are feeling it, right? So this ability, this is, this is a conscious muscle that you must pull. You have to tell yourself, hey, open up, take it into the heart. Because I said so, I'm the king or queen in my universe. Do it. I'm opening up to this. So a lot of people can't receive because they expect the world, the conscious, to take them over. But you'll notice a lot of people, when they have consciousness taking them over, they're swept off their feet. They don't receive there either. Sure, they're experiencing an intensity. It's intense to be taken and swept up. But honestly, you didn't receive it to the heart. You didn't own it. It's not a memory forever. It's not something you enjoyed. You didn't allow yourself to put it in the joy. Take it to the heart. Put it in the joy. This is where the joy is. So receiving is a consciousness you must activate. And this is why people have rituals of gratitude. The reason why people say thank you for our food is because you're opening up to receive the substance to the heart. The gratitude is the attitude of receiving. So if you're grateful for what you're about to receive or grateful for something else you're not about to receive, the universe doesn't care. The state of gratitude pulls you into the state of receiving. Once you receive from in life, you can share with others but not before. This is another huge mistake people make. They try to give, which is step 12. Actually, it's even higher than 12. I'm not going to go where it is. But it's way high if you want my opinion. They will start giving way before they've received the rent, way before they've received support. Before they've received so much, they try to give. So you are not to give, which technically giving starts at step 9, until you've already received before. And you might go, well, isn't that selfish? No, a child grows up receiving until they're 18 or older before they start giving. A tree receives sunlight and water for a long time before it makes acorns or fruit. This is how God is. God is you must receive, 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 receive. Fill the vial with awesome spiritual love and then you can give. So a lot of people can't receive because they're giving too soon and giving starts at step nine. God uh, always gives manifestations through people. 
You will never have your wish fall out of the sky or have a stork deliver it. It will always be a human being that knocks on the door and tells you you won, you won a prize or a human being that actually does the thing for you. Let's not forget that. Now, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of people have bad relationships with other people, and so they fail to receive in life, not because they're not open to receive it, not because they're not going to take it to the heart, not because they didn't they skipped the first five steps, but simply because <clears throat> when it comes to um, opening up, they're not good with people. They're not good with being comfortable with people. They're not good to ta about talking to people. So when God Universe sends the delivery package in a person, People don't receive, quite frankly, because they can't deal with the person. Now, dealing with the person is actually in a step nine ego issue. Your ego is what deals with people. And so this is where the universe is a little funky because uh, we don't necessarily have to be good at, you know, we don't actually have to do the right things until step nine or take action. So you really allow law of attraction to make sure that you belong step four there. If you have a hard time uh, dealing with people, then make sure you're where you belong, step four, because if you are, they're just as screwed up as you are and you should be able to pull it off. <laughs> okay, so step six, Libra, leads to relationships in astrology. Your ability to receive is actually what makes you a better in relationship. Can you receive the criticism? Can you receive their love? Can you receive their advice? Can you receive and tolerate their crap until they grow up? See, these are all receive, really, and that's why... Libra rules, step six. Now, in the first act of Libra, in other words, if you are born from step zero to ten, or if your Venus is step zero to ten, you are basically still learning how to talk and receive in your own mirage. That's a mirage transit. So anyone with Venus less than step ten actually is still learning how to deal with themselves, and only until you deal with yourself should you be in a relationship. Just say it. All right. Most of these people are totally relationship obsessed and not wanting to do the work on themselves. Most of these zero through 10 Venuses are trying to learn about themselves through relationships. So if you get a reading with me and you're under and you're under that, I'm always going to be like, all right, let's work on your mirage and then let's work on the next chapter. Now, Act 2, which is steps 11 through 19, are basically all human relationships for all reasons. So what you receive in relationships, what you will tolerate, what you will... And receiving depends on what you will give. Actually, receiving comes first. So if you can't receive something from them, you don't want to give to them. All right? So a lot of people are trying to give. They have a lot of anger to give at step nine when they haven't received at step six. And that's why your ego gets pissed. It's like, what, you want me to give to you and you haven't given to me? Well, it's in that order in the 11 steps. You have to be able to receive before you give. Remember, you got to be a child and not give before you give. So in Act 2, it's all about the ability to receive what you need to hear, hear, take the message to home, and it's about balancing. If you're an artist, usually your Venus is in Chapter 2 or higher. Most artists are all, you know, one of the things they love to practice receiving on is creative ideas, and they like to receive in order to balance the frame and that sort of thing. In Act 3 of Step 6, the third decan, these are steps 20 through 29, and this would be if your sun or Venus uh, happen to be in these steps. Basically, you are mastering balance in this lifetime. So you're mastering peace, you're mastering artistry, you're here to master diplomacy, you might be a judge, uh, an actual justice. And that's because you're receiving a multiplicity of feelings and opinions from, uh, and from people. You're not just receiving, you know, an opinion from one person. You're getting thousands of messages on your website or hundreds of letters. So people who are on the master level of receiving tend to um, deal with receiving on a high, high level from uh, society. And those people also tend to uh, find l the best love latest in life. So they're late bloomers with love because they have to learn all the things necessary they want to receive from the relationship and they have to be aware of all the things they want to receive in the relationship before they can receive the one they want. So I'll just leave you with this particular uh, uh, webisode with uh, the meaning or the opposite of receiving. The opposite of receiving is action. So if you take action, you're not receiving. If you say thank you, you're not receiving because you're doing the action of thank you. Receiving and action are opposites. 
Giving and receiving are opposites. An action is a gift. You give, you take action. So when you're giving, you are not receiving. So a real obvious thing is, is if you're saying, hey, I'm not having a good time in life, I'm not enjoying, it's like, well, what are you not doing? Because it's what, whatever you think you're doing to receive is right off the mis- a mistake. Receiving is quiet with gratitude to the heart. It is a passive Libra experience. It is not a pushy experience. And I know you want to give back right away, but even then you're going to hear me say, nope, don't give back right away. You have to sense step seven and then decide step eight and then you give back. So even when we receive, we should wait at least three steps before we give back. All right, my friends, step six is a longer step than the rest, but so important because we all want to receive joy. I'll see you in the next episode where we talk about step seven. And welcome to the Zen Den. So let's first take three breaths, particularly in this day of integrity, and see what connection we uh, feel. Also, yes, I'm quite clear, I've been told by many psychics, that my light is a royal blue uh, ionosphere with golden light in the middle. So that is absolutely who I am. And for anyone who loves me as much as I love you, I invite you to step in this circle and recharge, particularly on an integrity day. So let's take three breaths. Okay, and I have an affirmation to help you with your day, something to keep you in integrity. I accept and receive today the integrity already within me. I accept and receive today the integrity already within me, and so it is because I said so. Now the idea there is that we actually are perfect, we come from perfection, we come from heaven, and then we actually create these false flaws in us so that we can experience what it's like to be flawed and fix ourselves. So the truth is, in our subconscious is a memory of our perfect integrity. It's already there, it's not even something you have to learn, you simply have to remember or forget the dysfunction to allow. So today, I accept and receive the integrity that's already within me. I want that to come to the surface, and I'm affirming that for us both. All right, let's take a look at the overhead projector and talk about the planets today. Well, first, oh my goodness, I'm missing my four-color pen, so I think I'm going to have to look for one right here on camera. I did have to look for one right here on camera. There it is. (laughs) So today, looking at the planets... I get the word integrity from the sun at step 11. We're in step 11 of Aries. Aries is I am. 11 is I become. So today people become what it is they want to be. They put in the final piece. They find the realization. Or at least they finally recognize the truth in the mirror. On an integrity day, sometimes the integrity is realizing that you're so out of integrity. And that's what the integrity day did, was to show you. you got another 30 days to try to get in integrity again. So for some, they're recognizing they're out of integrity. This is what's so cool today. Our mind. Mercury is conjuncting Uranus at step 19. What this means is, if you enter into integrity, then your mind will jump way up to wherever Uranus can take you. Now, step 19 is I love and I act on, which adds to I manifest. So technically, in a very mundane way, our mind is focused on the actions we have to take. Our, fo- our mind is focused on the love that we have for something. And so we're looking to take a certain course of action. But what I argue is, uh, this will be an ascension above your current life. So as you are putting in the integrity down here at step 11, you are manifesting in your mind, you are thinking and manifesting a higher version of you, a greater version of you. By higher and greater, I mean stronger, I mean more resilient, I mean more capable of pulling off things that you want to pull off. So today we're in this kind of double whammy where we're coming into integrity and we're aiming for something in the future, almost maybe to pull us into the integrity as personal inspiration. Now here's some more inspiration, the moon. At print time, the moon is at step 12 Capricorn, but as the day progresses, by the end of the day, it will 
cross over Pluto, which is at step 17, Capricorn. Now, Pluto is where we must draw boundaries. We're either drawing them because we never drew them or because the old ones don't fit us anymore. And so today we're being called to draw emotional boundaries, particularly around step 17. That means boundaries that support what we love and the seven boundaries that support what our spirit wants and then boundaries that support our decisions. So by boundaries we mean, I'm not going to tell grandma because she's going to try to talk me out of it. I'm not going to tell her my decision. Boundaries in the sense of, Everybody wants this, but my spirit wants that, so I'm going to have to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, emotionally, you're being called through the day to let go of any emotions or situations that don't serve the love, the sense, and the decisions of your business, Capricorn. Okay, So anything that doesn't support that, you'll be called to let it go. And sometimes things don't support it is harboring. A lot of people will harbor their emotions. They'll keep feeling it, keep feeling it. And really it's kind of a junior way of, keep, of reminding yourself not to do it again. I mean junior in the sense of you could beat yourself or you could set your reminder on your phone and you're beating yourself. You know, So emotions that we continually play over and make ourselves feel the victim and be the victim, you're just, it's really a poor man's reminder. Get an iPhone or an electric phone and, and set a reminder for yourself. It's a lot less burdensome. Now, can you guess the planet that Spirit uh, called up uh, in my meditation today? It was Venus herself. And I was surprised. I was like, oh, I haven't heard from Venus in a long time, is what I thought in my head. Venus is at step 23. Of course, Venus crossed over Chiron the last 24 hours. So all of us, no matter what you experienced in the last couple days, let's say, emotionally you were led to let go of something that probably holds you back a lot in life. Something that could have been an obsession, it could have been a karmic thing, it could be an abuse, um, it could be a substance abuse because it's Pisces. But now Venus moves to step 23, which means we're opening up to the big picture. So you want to open up today to what you feel and what you believe, and then five, see what you think about it at the end. You want to open up. Lastly, I want to talk about Mars. Mars is at step seven. Here's Mars. I, I circle both Mars and Saturn. Step seven, which is I sense. So technically our male, which is what rules Aries, our male is officially on our spiritual needs today. That also means that we want to be compassionate, take the easy road, don't put too much on ourselves. And remember, Mars is heading for our decisions, uh, Saturn at step 16, at which point uh, when it crosses, we'll kind of uh, know if this philosophy has worked or not. But the point of today is follow your spiritual instinct seven more than anything else. All right? Okay, well, that wraps up today's Zen Den. Let's turn off that. And I do want to point out or shout out to my uh, personal subscribers who I'm very grateful for that today's eye candy at 3 p.m. your local time will be about your Venus. We'll be talking about what level is your Venus on and what does it take to sustain your Venus, okay? What does it take to keep it, keep it open? You'll have that secret at 3 o'clock your local time. All right, my friends, that's all I have for today. Remember uh, to come to my website and let me know what city you should be. I should be visiting in May for my birthday. And also check out my services. I've got birthday calls, secrets of birthdays, and of course the full-on reading if you're ready to get that deep. Remember, I love you and live, love, be.